Ah, no, you, Chinese. Ah, not English. Both. A little? Both. <laughs> Both my, my Portuguese is better than my English. You can laugh if you want. <laughs> because my English is like, woo. But well, I will survive. So, uh, welcome uh, to the, the voice is an infinite instrument is the workshop that we prepared for you. Uh, we want to be a little flexible, depends on your, you know, what you need. More or less, we will change a little <laughs> the course of the, of the workshop. Uh, but uh, we prepared a first part, like one, half and, uh, one and a half hours, about the movement and the voice together, okay? And uh, the second part is more about the techniques and also, if we have enough time, some things about interpretation. <laughs> but, well, I don't think we will have all the time, I think so. Um, so, I would like to, to introduce uh, Rui Felipe. <coughs> he is a, a, a pianist, composer, uh, arranger, from Portugal, from Lisbon, and he, he also works here in, in Macau at distance uh, with a company of music. And we have a project, a duet project called Jangada de Pedra, Stone Draft. Stone Draft. <laughs> and we are making a tour through China and, and Japan. Japan. <laughs> and well, uh, since I, I used to give classes of, of singing and also music, especially jazz, jazz music, I, I used to, to teach in, in Spain, Portugal, and also in India. Uh, but my English there was the same. <laughs> <laughs> but with this. <laughs> so... Uh, I used to teach uh, some different things, like uh, vocal technique and some techniques for improvisation. But, well, I don't know about the, the audience. What do you need exactly if it's techniques? I, I, I guess it's the more practical thing. What do you think? Technique? It's fine. Okay. <laughs> So, um, well, I would like to introduce uh, some techniques about movement and voice uh, from Poland, is Grotowski and Molik. This is uh, something that they developed a long time ago. I, I, had, uh, I was so lucky to have, to have a, a course, some courses, with George Parente. George Parente is uh, from Portugal and France. And uh, he's a disciple of Molik. This technique is called the body alphabet. And perhaps... This video is a little crazy, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but I, I think it's, it's very, very good to develop some skills with the body. 
you know, you, you don't need to be a dancer or something like this uh, to sing, but it's, uh, you know, we have in general a problem and it's like voice is one thing and the body is another thing. And uh, I think it's, it's so good to join them and think about the unity of the, of the body with the voice, with the mind, everything. Um, sometimes when we are talking about <laughs> technique, we are thinking all the time that, like the resonate uh, or the larynx or, you know, and we, we don't pay any attention to the body. Uh, I don't know if you are so shy or not, but uh, I would like you to do this. <laughs> and <laughs> more or less, more or less. Um, well, these, these techniques, I don't know if, if you know something about this, more or less? Have you ever heard? Yeah. So, uh, this is based on the um, alphabet, the body alphabet. It was created by Grotowski and Molik, and they uh, developed some different uh, letters, you know, so you have a letter, uh, like, for example, this one. And it's something that you have to imagine. What are you doing? Well, I don't know. Something that inspires you. No? So, uh, we will start with some movements, like this, or like this, like pushing something with our imagination and our body at the same time. Um, or, for example, like doing movements like this, okay? Uh, after that, we will join the, the sound, okay? Everything with the A, like ah, uh, with the mouth wide open. In general, when we, when we start to, to do some technique exercises, we, we think that we shouldn't uh, breathe through the mouth because it's a little dirty and also it, uh, it, uh, it's cold, no? There, it's so cold and it's not good for our vocal cords. But let's make an exception only to learn this kind of projection of the voice, okay? You agree? Okay, so with uh, the piano inspiration, <laughs> Rui Felipe. Okay. We can wake up. And perhaps we can take the chairs out. No? We are a few people. Yeah, make space, make some space. <laughs> Okay. In general, the, the movement, we have to feel that the body is the voice too. No? When you are making something like this, the movement starts here. Okay? So we are like. Um, how do you say in English? Support. We are supporting the voice with the movement. And this part is responsible for that. Okay? So, you can walk and warm up with anything you, you know that is good to warm up. It's not a, a problem. <laughs> So we feel the space, okay? All the time walking. Yeah, the chaos. <laughs> we prefer the chaos. Yeah, great. So we'll start with this one. Like improvising, 
as you want with something. <laughs> and this part is like, yeah, move me. Another one, like pushing something, yeah. It could be something so heavy or something like so small. But we improvise. with the conscience that we are moving this part. Okay. Another one. It's like this. But you don't do this. No? You do this. Another one. Okay. And you can modify as you want. <laughs> okay. With this. I can't. It's difficult. Okay. Without shoes is better. Okay, another one is working so, so slowly. Another letter is to fly. <laughs> Everyone knows how to fly. Yeah. Could be another lyric running. <laughs> another one. It's like you open your your body. And you want to find something that it's there and you go there and then suddenly <laughs> you feel afraid <laughs> no. so again <laughs> okay you have this one you want to touch something that is behind you 
you can't. Well, you can't the other way. <laughs> we can try it the other way. And you can create links between all these figures. No? So we have some elements uh, to play with. No? So we can start doing this and creating an action. And suddenly, whew, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm not a dancer, you can see that. <laughs> but it's only for you to, to know some things that can open uh, your mind with your voice and your body. Okay. <laughs> and we can make that work of art. <laughs> okay. So let's move freely and we will start making some sounds with our mouth very open <laughs> and ah, uh, okay. It doesn't have to be like a baroque thing, <laughs> only something like uh, long notes. Okay. Any note that you think is good with the piano? It's enough. Okay, chaos. Chaos, chaos. Another possibility is like opening a curtain. Another letter is to develop something to someone. <laughs> well, sing. <laughs> Also, we, we can observe something that is so far.
Well, there are some positions that are very difficult with a script. <laughs> well, I'll try to do at least one of them. And it's good for some things like Okay, <laughs> not that difficult. But you are like this, no? and you do this. No? Yeah, exactly. But you uh, you make like, <laughs> and with that impulse. But <laughs> I'm not dressed for this. And the other one with the legs are like, no, no, no. <laughs> But there, there are lots of letters of the body alphabet, and you have uh, in the in the three levels, you know, like the the floor, the medium, and the high. Okay, so one of them, for example, is the snake. This is fine <laughs> for the skirt. <laughs> so we are like a snake, and we have curiosity. Hmm. Okay, you have lots of elements to play with. No? In three hours, it's impossible to <laughs> develop all these things, but let's just play with this, okay? And play with the voice. Let's try to think something together, okay? Like some musical thing. Okay, chaos. <laughs>
So we had the body alphabet, but uh, after that, we started to, to make a circle singing. I don't know if you have any experiences in a circle singing, but in general, well, you have lots of games with this, and you can, you can compose little pieces to improvise, you know? Uh, like, uh, we can play with the rhythm, we can play with the beat and all this stuff. Uh, let's make something ahead with a harmony, a little, like... I don't know if... Uh, B flat? B flat? Uh, the Dorian mode, do you know something about it? No? Yeah, it's a minor scale with the sixth uh, major, a major sixth. But, well, we don't, we don't have to, to know harmony, but to have ears. Yeah? So it's like, what? can you make like a bed for us? <laughs> Okay, with that sonority, I'll write down the, the scale. So we have one, two, flat three. What is that? <laughs> if, if we. One, two, flat three. No? One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Seven, eight. Okay. It's only for you if you want a reference, but it's not necessary if only if you are curious about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Let's play some call response. No? One, two, three, two, one. One, two, three, two, one. Five, one, two, three. Five, one, two, three. Three, four, five. song in this mode. La, da, 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 da. La, 
I'll sing it for you with lyrics. <laughs> La casa del caracol. Esta casa del caracol. Está virada para o sol. Está virada para o sol. Só tem uma soalhada. Mas nunca fica molhada. Mas nunca fica molhada. La de la 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 de la 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 la. La da 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 da. And now, if I do this, is the five? You have to sing the five, <laughs> the fifth. One, two, three, four, five, Can you recognize it? Tan 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 tan. So this is the um, the perfect fifth. No? Uh, in general, I think it, it's good to have a reference when we are singing to have the references uh, of the at least at the octave. No, so we have one in the middle, more or less, <laughs> the fifth. And the eight at, at the end. No, we can we can train our ear, you know, to to know where we are. And in fact, I'm sure you know where you are exactly. But sometimes we can't recognize if it's a five. But we see, we feel like the ching pong, <laughs> the, the typical thing. <laughs> You know, the, when, a, when a song is finishing, like, ching pong. <laughs> oh. Ching pong. Ching pong. Okay. This is a technique that I like to share too. It's for children, but I, I don't think it's only for children, it's for anyone. Okay. Uh, it's. Uh, it's Difficult at the beginning, but later is is very useful and it's funny. It funny no fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's fun, and well, now we are prepared. No? <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, we can calculate its mathematics. One, three. <laughs> it's, yeah, in music, we have a lot of mathematics, no? And, well, we can take advances of mathematics with a lot of things, with the tempo, with, with the, the pitch, no? the pitches in a, in a scale, and, and all this. And the, okay, so let's do it again. So we can fix the the, um, the tones, no? the notes, um, also with our body. No, it's not only about movement, or but we can recognize uh, like the chest voice, no, like oh, we have the vib vibration a lot here in our chest. Oh, oh. It's, it should be like a mixed thing in the middle, like we have the mixed voice here. We can talk about this later. And the, the head voice. At, at the same time, we should uh, feel the vibration in our body. N don't lose the connection. But we have to change like the angle because uh, we can't sing everything in the same manner. No? Like one, eight, oh. no? So we have to modify some things and see where we have to resonate the voice. No? But at the same time, never lose the, the relationship with the body. But when we are singing, okay, I have to sing the one or the eight, no? We can think by, uh, with the body, no? Not only with the ears, but the, you know, the, the physical thing. Like, one, it's totally different. Like, eight, it's another voice. We have a lot of voices, okay, again. I want you to to think about this kind of thing. Um, Let's improvise. Can you Sorry. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> the chaos, it's me. Improvise by yourselves or no? No? 
Okay, <laughs> it's fine. So, uh, we wanted to, to sing a song. Well, what's the time? Ah, it's fine. So, uh, we would like to, to make a song, uh, an African song from Ghana called Coco Leoko. Since this is the, the African week, I don't know if you, yeah, you know. So, it's, it's a little, it's a little piece in from Macau. Ghana. African week in Macau. In Macau. <laughs> Only to, to practice some, some song with, with you all together. And we can sing in two, two voices. So it's... Ooh. <laughs> it's... Now you have to still... To stay until the end of the workshop. Exactly. This is the first part, since, it, well, in music, uh, something that is very important is the structure, everything. The little structure, bigger structure, bigger structure, bigger, the, the full structure and all the, the things, the elements that we are using. For example, the, um, the patterns. Human being works with patterns all the time. If you are learning a telephone number, you don't say like, well, my telephone number, it's one nine. After this, you have one eight, <laughs> one, you know, because it's very difficult to, uh, memorize. to memorize. Thank you. And what do we do? For example, I, I used to make like three, 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 you know, like, if not, it's impossible for me. If someone is saying like numbers in two, 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 is it? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so, well, uh, and th these are habits that we have. And sometimes, well, music, uh, it has to be done with intuition and something very organic and all this stuff. But at the same time, our mind has to be our friend for these things. So we can join everything, no? our spirituality, our, our feelings and emotions, and also our mind, our mathematics, you know? So we can say, ah, this is four times. One is like the phrase is going up at the end. And the second one is going down. Okay, this is uh, one, one pattern, you no? Know? This was a pattern. <coughs> but we also have a pattern with two phrases like this, no? So we memorize this thing. But we know it will be uh, like twice that extra structure, like going up and going down, no? Coco leoko, mama coleoko. Coco leoko, mama coleoko. Again. Coco leoko, mama coleoko. Coco leoko, mama coleoko. And now we have 
the, uh, in the structure. This, this is the A part, no? And this is the B part. It's like when you are singing a song and you have the, the refrain, you know? The chorus. Yeah. The chorus. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I said. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the, the chorus and well it's very useful especially when we for example are improvising some things in just music for example or any music that is improvised it's good to to have the structure in our head because if not the musicians are Making like woo, one round, another round, and you, woo, 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 where is this? Where, where am I? So it's very, very important. So, Abba Mama Koleoko, Abba Mama Koleoko. And now happens the same thing. Abba Mama Koleoko. Okay? Abba Koleoko. Okay? Uh, beautiful, the, the, the two voices. <laughs> okay. And, well, let's sing the, the full structure, okay? One, two, three, and... Three. and Coco leo co, mama co leo co. Coco leo co, mama co leo co. Aba 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 mama co Okay, so we can sing uh, like, mm, mm, let's see, like uh, you can sing uh, the first part and you the second part. A, B. Uh, A and B. Yeah. A team, B team. Yes. Yeah, we have a name for our group. It was A and B. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. So... Um, we have um, a coco leo no coco leo com no doubts no no okay so one two three four Okay. Anyone wants to improvise? No? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, we we can be the, the soloist. Hey, we. <laughs> no, but you know you are singing, and each one, someone is singing like a little, a, something different. <laughs> you you want to try? We can try. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll start by here, and you have time to. <laughs> okay, okay. 
we sang together. But improvising like what? Yeah. <laughs> improvising? With, with the words, with the rhythm? Ah, no, no, anything, anything. It's free. Like you have the bass of the other voices and... Or you, you can use the lyrics, you know. Mama, mama, Something that... Uh, anything, anything, yeah. <laughs> With the okay. voice, voice. With the voice. Uh, who, who wants to improvise, like, comes to the center. Woo! Okay. <laughs> okay, A, B, I will improvise a little, and someone. <laughs> I always say in my classes, like, well, we're not doctors operating someone. So if we have, uh, you know, a mistake, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. um, A and B. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, Jandira Silva. 
Yeah. <laughs> if you want. If you... I, just, I cannot stay to the end because I need to go for a gig, but I cannot like uh, live, you know, without coming here to give mm. some support for this amazing singer coming straight <laughs> from Portugal to teach us some stuff. Thank but you. then I was thinking that I need to go, otherwise I'm going to be very late. Ah. <laughs> no, so don't worry if you... No, if no. You... I sing a song, then I, if you guys don't be upset with me and you too, then we... <laughs> okay, okay. Okay? Okay, okay. So what we're going to sing? <laughs> um, do you want to sing the autumn leaves? So in a, a minor. Yeah. Talking in in a conversation with other friends once, yeah, and give this kind of open heart to invite me to see you know what she's doing. It's very nice. <laughs> we are so lucky to <laughs> to have you here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We talk. Yeah. Falamos pelo WhatsApp. Falamos, falamos. Falamos. Thank you so much. Well, so, um, mm, do you want to, to have the break now and, and we start with the, um, the technique? Or if you aren't tired, we can woo, continue. But it's not like singing. Uh, it's like you are sitting down and I'm explaining things. <laughs> it's more relaxed. Okay. Ten minute break, no? Yeah, ten minutes. Okay. okay.
<risa> no, es, podemos tocar en un fin, ¿no? Yo lo sé. Pronto, está bien. So we will start the second part of our workshop. So now I will, maybe in English, no? In English? Is it English, it's better? Okay. So I will introduce Mili because he has introduced me, so I owe this to him. <laughs> so Mili Vizcaino is a Spanish singer, also an author. She has a master in, in jazz and has been teaching in several countries, has been having an experience as a singer also in, mostly in India, Spain, South America, playing with different kinds of and styles of music. Uh, so she, she's been approaching a, a lot of angles of the, the, the voice and the, the singing mode. So, uh, and we have met Uh, she's from Spain, I'm from Portugal. We have met um, by an agent who invited us to play in a festival. And then we stood with this uh, stone raft, Janga de Pedra, uh, aiming for an Iberian project, because Portugal and Spain are... Um, it's, it's a peninsula, Iberic Peninsula it's called. So we move on with the project. And this project is about also having... Um, a contact with different kinds and approaches of the Portuguese and Spain diaspora. So it's like it has a little bit of Africa, South America, Spain and Portugal, because these languages are spoken in several countries in a very diverse mode. So our approach to this um, kind of music has expanded, you know, our perspective of um, these soundscapes. <laughs> soundscapes in music, in rhythm, in harmony, in melody, and in interpretation. So we are working in this kind of project. That's what uh, has binded us, is binding us to do our, um, our project, common project. But it's her workshop. So <laughs> take it away. <laughs> so, they want to play. I think it would be nice to join the voice and the body in one song we, we perform. So to, to expand a little bit this kind of stage thing, you know, and having it all. <laughs> Deixa mais compasso pra poder brincar Mas não me deixe aqui sozinho Tenho medo de me enfeitiçar Não me leve o seu carinho Eu preciso sua voz pra me embalar Ser um farol para muita gente Deixa o ser a voz de um poeta emergente Deixa que a lua possa vir dançar Mas não, não me deixe aqui sozinho Tenho medo de me enfeitiçar Não me leve o seu carinho Eu preciso sua voz 
voz para me embalar. Vai a Deixa o ser dragão ter a aventura de unicórnio, ser camaleão ou um ET imaginário. Deixa a fantasia para poder sonhar, mas não me deixe aqui sozinho. Tenho medo de me enfeitiçar. Não me leve o seu carinho. Eu preciso sua voz para me embalar. Baia, 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 baia. Não me deixe aqui sozinho Tenho medo de me enfeitiçar Não me leve o seu carinho Eu preciso sua voz Não me deixe aqui sozinho Tenho medo de me enfeitiçar Não me leve o seu carinho Eu preciso sua voz Pra me embalar Vai a baia Vai a baia Now, theory. <laughs> so, um, well, we don't have so much time, but I would like you to to know something about Josephine Steele. I'd like to talk about Woo! why I'm. <laughs> uh, she's, uh, you know, the creator of the Steele voice craft, which is. Um, Something, it's not a method or something like this. It's only an investigation, a research about the voice and the qualities of the voice. So uh, what she explains in general is like, um, everyone can sing, you know? everybody can sing. And we have a lot of tools, but we don't know it in general. You know? uh, when we are in our daily life, we, uh, we use all these tools, not all of them, but almost all of them. And we can uh, make even some combinations, mixing different techniques and all, all these things. But, uh, well, we can sing with all these elements or only with only, only one, one element. For example, some people who sing only with spoken voice, you know? like, you know, for example, João Gilberto, you know? it's really, Smooth. yeah, but it's not necessary to, to use a lot of tools or only one tool, you can mix things or not, in general, um, anything is fine if you don't damage your your vocal cords. I think if it's healthy, it's it's good, and we like it, of course. I like 
what I'm singing? Okay. Uh, am I damaging myself? No. Oh, it's really fine. I think so. And we have to look for our own personality, singing, and to know what do you want, uh, what do you want to do with music? You know? Perhaps we, we always think about something so far away, like if you want uh, like win a Grammy, <laughs> it's, you know, it's not necessary to, to look for some, so far away. Sometimes we can only um, appreciate what we can do in our daily life. And, well, it's so beautiful to have a voice. So Doing this. I'm not performing. I don't care about performing anymore. In fact, I find this kind of performance disturbing. I was conditioned to be, not to be seen or heard, to be in the background, not to make any noise, not to call attention to myself. I would much rather be in the lab adding numbers, <laughs> making graphs, doing research. But I want to do this for one reason. I want everybody to sing. I want everybody to use their voice. I have one more experience to tell you. I went back to school, as I told you, at 45, and was teaching. And one day I was teaching this girl, and her little brother was there, and her mother. And I was demonstrating. And the little boy said, Mama, why is she crying? I can't tell you what an experience that was. I had been this great voice since the age of four. She's going to be a great singer. And I did get to be a great singer. I just didn't like performing. But I realized that if I, I was crying, but everybody cries, why doesn't everybody sing? And then I realized that I should not have been a singer. I was a crier all my life. My father wouldn't let me cry. Tito, don't piange più. He didn't want me to cry because he didn't know what to do about it. He'd given us a home, food, clothing. What more did I need? He didn't know that we needed just sympathy. <laughs> he was an orphan, so he didn't know that we needed love. But I would, I would not cry. I would go... <sighs> and I was strengthening these muscles. <laughs> That's why I was a good singer. I had strengthened these muscles. <sighs> and I promised after this couple of weeks of this angst, realizing I'd wasted two-thirds of my life doing something I didn't want to do, I would find out what it was I was doing, and I would teach everybody how to do that. Because when you stop and think about it, more people in the world want to sing than do sing. They I talk to a bank president. I say, everyone has a beautiful voice. And they'll smile and say, not me. You couldn't teach me to sing. And his face says, I want to. But I don't believe I can. Last week in London, at the International Conference of Voice Teachers, I had the opportunity to teach 10 minutes of belting. <clears throat> It was Anne-Marie Speed who had a talk, and someone asked her about belting on stage or a loud voice, and she said, well, there's an expert right here. Let her tell you. And I, I was asked to give them a demonstration, and I gave them 10 minutes of yelling. Hey! You know, and I had them all waving their arms. I said, it's in the voices in the hand here. It's in the hand. You have to go like that. And it's in the voice. And they did. And they loved it. The rest of the week, all they could do was smile when they looked at me and laughed. I had given them permission to yell. Now, the first thing we do when we're born is yell. 
And then after that, we're told to shut up, not to make so much noise. You're driving me crazy. Stop that yelling. And we get the idea that our voice is bad. It gets us into trouble. Our voice is inside us. We're bad inside. And we believe that before we can ever have any other, any other position. And you'll be 35 years old and have to give a talk to the school board or something, and you're scared to make that speech because they'll know how bad you are inside. That's too bad. It's not true. First of all, what we should do with our kids is take them out every day at 5 o'clock on the back porch and make them yell and applaud. Great. They heard you across the street. See if you can do it two, two blocks away. <laughs> mm -hmm. And otherwise, show everyone in the world how beautiful they are inside. Because once they know how beautiful they are inside, then there's nothing they can't dream. Nothing they can't dream of doing and do it. And that's what I want you guys to do. So, uh, well, in general, uh, the technique is nothing without the emotions, no? And the emotions uh, construct, no? Build the the culture, no? When when we we have different styles of music from one country to another, no? it's each country has like different muscle memories, for example. Or uh, what she was saying, like, I was always crying into me, not, not crying so loudly, you know? Like, it's called sob. It's, it's a, a kind of crying, but you are crying into you. Like, you can train it like, it's not a projected voice, but it's a good position for, for some technical things. <laughs> I can't explain everything now because we don't have so much time. But um, in general, the emotions will, uh, will lead us to different kind of uh, techniques. And well, I would like you to, to know at least some, some principles of breathing before going to, to the qualities of the voice. <coughs> and this is, sorry, because the, ah, 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 the sound is too much. <laughs> okay, this is the middle and the high uh, breathing in the video. In, in yoga, you have the, the pranayamas, which are the, the different exercises of controlling um, the, the breath. So, in general, we can say that we, we can have a complete breathing, no? like everything, or we can breathe by parts, depending on, on what we need to do. For example, we have the, the, high, the high breathing. It's like we are moving this part. Well, this is the typical breathing that uh, a teacher says, don't do that. No? You don't need to move these things no? for the shoulders and to, to breathe correctly. You also, in, uh, but you will use it in belting. No? We'll see later. This one, can you? So this one is the medium breathing, and it's like the rib muscles are activated, so we open our, our ribs, okay? It's like making the superhero. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, remember, superhero. Okay? This kind of movement it's very useful when we have a, a very long phrase. You know? We have to keep there into us. Well, 
this is the, the, the trick, the, <laughs> the tip for do that. Yeah. Another one is like um, the abdominal or diaphragm. It's like you don't move the chest, but you move the stomach. No, it's like. It's important to isolate the different kind of uh, breathing because it's very useful. And also to join them like down breathing and middle. Okay. In, in the diaphragm breathing, what we are doing is like going down, downwards with our diaphragm, which is a, a very big muscle and it has a lot of, you know, strength. But he's not the, the only one that we have to move. We can't abuse him, you know, because uh, he, he is what he is. It's not like, well, not the, all the power has to be from the diaphragm. And we have also the other muscles in, in the abdomen. So, for example, if we do like, we put one hand here, and another one here, and we make like, <coughs> <coughs> uh, all these muscles are moving too, no? It's everything. When we, when we are talking or when we are um, uh, singing, it's good to, to make that, como era eso? Apoyo? To support, support, no? To support our voice oh, with everything, you know? Not, not a lot of strength, you know? It's like simply activate the muscles, okay? Techniques aren't about forcing, it's not good, yeah. And sometimes, some teachers say like um, some things like you have to imagine you are in, in the bathroom like, and it's not correct because, uh, well, our larynx has to be open to sing or speak. And if we think about that action, no, like, we are closing our larynx. It's not that movement yeah it's the opposite one yeah when we for example as speech therapists when we work for example in the paralysis of the vocal cord which you want to provoke movement of the vocal cord that is paralyzed we use that kind of exercises the ones you said of <coughs> and like controlled screaming like oh! because what you want to do is to force the vocal folds to close mm -hmm. if, you, if you are singing and talking and teaching you need to have all the muscles of the larynx relaxed. So it's exactly the opposite of that recording thing that you give the example when you go to the toilet, for example. Because that yes. is to, it creates tension because you want to force the, the, the closure of the gap of the vocal cord. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's the opposite. Yeah, it's the opposite thing. But it's really good to, to make those things because, it, well, Control I was thinking, right? yeah, Control. and to contrast, yeah. no? We need, to, for example, uh, my, my first teacher of yoga, I only know a little about yoga, but I had some different teachers. And uh, the first one told me like, well, you have to create tension, one, one of the exercises. And after that, you go to the opposite thing, no? to relax. And sometimes it's, it's good to, like in a still voice craft, that, that you know, um, you know the mass of the, um, the volume, the volume of the vocal cords can be like this or like this or like this. Yeah? Uh, they, they change the volume and the disposition. And well, it's important to know the different ways to move the, the vocal cords and the muscles. No, because we are moving the muscle, the arytenoides, I don't know in English, ari arytenoides. 
Uh, and well, this is uh, the this breathing and this one together for long phrases and. So we see the, the diaphragm going up and down. The lungs are very flexible. And, but, well, if we don't move our diaphragm, they will stay so little. No? We have to make space for them. And we are also activating our rib muscles. So it's like expanding in this direction and in this direction. So we can feel the, the, the lungs. For example, uh, in, in yoga, they used to, to make the complete breathing, which makes like the high, uh, the high one, the middle one, and down one. Okay? But it's not only the diaphragm who has to do all the work, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would like to show you how the vocal cords work. A little, at least. The first time you see that is like, Ugh! but later it's fine. <laughs> the second time is... Okay, so we have the, the vocal cords. It's uh, fault, no? and we have the muscles who are uh, are moving no? to join or separate no? the arytenoids, and uh, we have the the trachea, no? and they are in the cartilago thyroides. I don't know in English thyroides. So when we are breathing, they are separated. When we are talking or seeing it, they are together, and by by that vibration, uh, we have the sound. <coughs> they can have different positions. Uh, for example, when we want to make a low note, they are like shorter. When it's a high note, they will. <laughs> My English stretch. Stretch. Yeah. Thank you. So I so I'll put the sound for you to okay. This is a laryng laryngoscopy. Uh, here is the epiglottis, which is a fundamental piece uh, for for some techniques. It's very important. Because we have different keys in the body to stop the sound. No? If you want to create some compression in something, you have to put uh, like something closing. No? I can see, I can say like, or no? the second one is compressed, no? like. Uh, because it had uh, it had an obstacle. Yeah. Are you ready? Uh, so this one is stretching no? because it's higher, a higher pitch. Well, the sound is no no good in this video, so. This video is interesting because, for example, here it has a window, you know, and um, it's called a glottic window. When, when you, you can't uh, close completely the vocal cords, and for example, when you make falsetto, it's a little, uh, it's, you have a window open, so you, yeah? A gap. Yeah, a gap. A gap. It's, it's the posterior 
not what it could get. In English. <laughs> <laughs> And you can see, see, she is uh, like soft, and after this, like very um, loudly. Okay, when she is singing loudly, she is like making all the um, all the movement. So the the volume of the vocal cords is like touching all the all the surface of them with each other this is for some techniques or some some notes it's really 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 an effort so we have to avoid it sometimes we have to to make the the volume increase with uh, with the resonate because if it's only with our vocal cords it's like so hard for them, no? It's important to to vary. Nice loud he. And again. singing at a low pitch and then sing up okay. well it's enough no? <laughs> okay um another piece that uh, is very important is the soft palate do you know what it, what it is? Velo del paladar, que es bastante simple. Velo del paladar in Spanish. Um, but I use this video only. You have the, the resonates yeah, of, of the, the head. We have a lot of resonates. But, well. <laughs> This is the, the soft palate. Hmm? This. And uh, our, our voice depends on, on this for a, lo uh, a lot of things, but mainly for the nasal voice or non-nasal. Okay? So when, when we are singing non-nasal, it's completely up. So it's closing the nose and we are singing everything through the mouth. Uh, let's try it. Uh, and there's no variation if we uh, okay. If it's in the middle, like, you know, like, this is... We have variations because it's in the middle, no? It's, not, it's like the half and the half. Uh, but it's going through the nose and through the mouth. Completely nasal. <laughs> because everything is going out through the, the, the nose. Okay? So, uh, for some techniques, like some things that we are um, making, like opera, for example, uh, in general, uses a position, a very high position. And, well, I think it's important to say that soft palate is something that we, we have to consider. 
Uh, and the tongue, the tongue is uh, very close with the larynx, and it's very important too to to have relaxed and active. And the, you know where where the tongue is will determine some different harmonics. So our voice when we are singing, if I sing a uh, central do. We are listening to a lot of harmonics. No? Um, say, you have a lot of different harmonics there. Uh, like if it's this note, you will uh, like hear to all of this, no? no? It's a lot of, a lot of uh, sounds. And it depends on our muscles. The position of our larynx, if it's like down in the middle or high, the, the tongue down in the middle or high, the soft palate down in the middle, high. <laughs> and the um, facial muscles too. So it's important to, to consider all these things. The richness of the, of the voice and the timbre, our personal timbre, depends on our harmonics. You know? if, uh, for example, if I, I, if I speak like this, I'm, I'm putting my larynx upwards. No? Or oh, if I go like <laughs> downwards, we can change really. Uh, the difference between the harmonics, or uh, if I'm putting my tongue like this or like this. Well, all these things uh, change uh, our timbre and the harmonics also uh, has, have a, a very close uh, relationship with the world. No? When you are singing, you have to project your voice and it's good to be a little lazy, like to take advances of the harmonics, the empathy of the harmonics that you, you find in, in a place. For example, if I'm singing here, it's different. Like if I'm singing there, it's another acoustic situation. So in general, it's good to, to think about these things. And the qualities of the, of the voice, we can make with, do you know summertime? Summertime and the living is easy. Yeah, or do you prefer happy birthday? <laughs> <laughs> summertime. Summertime. Yeah. So, Ay, this one. Um, so we are so bo bored, bored, and we are singing without any effort. Okay. So Okay, let's go. It's without any pain or glory. <laughs> okay, a little. Uh, so, like, we're bored. So, falsetto. 
Mm. Uh, set with mm. our uh, win, uh, glottic window. How was it? The. Yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> well, that thing. Uh, falsetto. So let's sing, like, for example, um, Marilyn Monroe and Happy Bird. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that film. Or uh, a little girl who is very, very innocent and shy. And she's. Summertime and a little easy. You know? Okay? One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> So this kind of voice is very useful. For example, when you are singing backing vocals, it's very, very good to create an ambience, no? Isn't it? It's magic. A sedu seductive ambience. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Something like this. But, uh, you, you know, since it's open, <laughs> you have a window open, you are all the time, you know, there, like, it ends so quickly. So you are, like, put in air and <laughs> all the time. So you dry, you, your vocal cords get dry. So when you are singing a lot with this technique, you have to hydrate your vocal cords. If not, it's a little dangerous. But it's fine. Uh, some some people only sing with with this technique all the time, and it's really cool. And well, its voice is a world, a different world. And well, uh, so falsetto, uh, Marilyn Monroe, <laughs> Marilyn. Oh my God, Marilyn! How do I write this? Yeah. yeah. Monroe. Okay. So we have twang. You know when when you are saying like nyeh, 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 nyeh. Let's do that. <laughs> so this is twang. It's like the a crying baby. Like <laughs> And it's something biological, because if not, uh, like in the past, the mother put the baby under a tree, and it was like, oh, I can't remember where's the baby, and then the baby, ah, ah there, no. So this is the um, the technique for survival. <laughs> so the twang, it's like uh, you are closing your epiglottis you are creating more compression. And it's something that could be nasal. <coughs> or, uh, for example, if I say, <coughs> It's not nasal, but I am closing my epiglottis. So you have uh, a lot of um, 400, Keys, so the the middle frequencies. That uh, the middle frequencies goes like uh, ahead, straight ahead. You know, it's not like, for example, the low harmonics are like in circle. And well, when you are singing this way, you can uh, sing with a loudly voice. So, twang. Summer twang. Time. <laughs> and the living is easy. 
exaggerated. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. It's a very natural movement. We can see him. For different techniques, we will use it or not. <laughs> uh, and a baby crying. We have also soap. It's like crying inside. Like. That thing that she was explaining. What happens is like the larynx goes downwards <coughs> and the the cricoides till so this is also good to make a vibrato so oh uh, this thing tilts yeah yeah a vibrato is like you have a main note and a secondary note softer than this, no? Ah, ah, no? But it's like we, we listen to the main note and the other one, it's softer. Ah, or uh, you can... Ah, there are different vibratos, no? Uh, uh, fast or slow, uh, the distance between the notes can be different. No? In general, it's like a uh, half, half tone, no? a semitone, semitone yeah. or, or less. Quarter tone. Mm, a quarter of tone. And well, so this is. It's not projected, it is very soft. Okay, but it's not like summertime because it would be falsetto. No? Um, and the opera, opera, it's a state size voice. It's not like the, this we use in our daily life. No? This one is like you are creating something with sob plus twang so the larynx is downwards and it's tilt and uh, you are closing the piglottis hmm? it's like opera is so soft like, well i don't sing opera at all but i'll do my best <laughs> so like making like Increasing that movement of the piglottis, no? With higher note is easier. <laughs> uh, so this is a mix about two techniques. Okay, let's sing summertime. Well, 
okay? Oh. Well, I don't know how to, to sing opera, but it's this kind of thing. You have a lot of variations, it's a very rich world. But if we think about the, the qualities of the voice, it's like technically, it's that thing. And we have another thing. She was talking about belting. Belting is like, hey. <laughs> so it's an emergency voice. So we won't breathe with everything. Like, hey. <laughs> with, only with this part. Of, hey. Wait, wait. When, when we have an emergency, no, we have our car so far away, and we can see a little child with a key, like, and we say, hey! No? This is belting. No? For example, when you say, now the joy of my world is in Zion. And it's like you are you are singing with the vocal cords, with all the volume of the vocal cords, and you are singing also with the twang, and the, it's like, ah. <laughs> with, uh, you know, with the, the, all the power, like, what you want, baby, I got it. No. And uh, each style has um, each memory uh, muscle, muscle memory, for example, to sing like, what do you want, baby, I got it? You can sing with spoken voice because it's so sad, no? What do you want, baby, I got it? No? <laughs> what do you want, baby, I got it? No? Or you can sing Corcovado with belting. Home can sing with... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's better no, no mix. <laughs> So uh, let's make like belting. Uh, it's not about like supporting the voice with this part simply. No, like it's about the sternocleidomastoideo. We are an encouraging these muscles. Okay, so we can take our our chair like. Okay, <laughs> it's about these muscles. So we can we can uh, gritar, scream, scream, shout, scream, shout. Okay, so one, two, three. Hey! Well, it's an emergency. It's an emergency. One, two, three. Hey! Yeah. Without the H. Hey! Okay. One, two, three. Hey! Okay. This is the belting. Uh, some people have a great vocal cords. Like, uh, they don't have uh, problems if they sing with belting. But... Uh, well, we, we, we need to know how to, to sing with belting because it's really an effort. So it's a, an amazing technique, but we, we need to have consciousness about the effort it's for the like body. Learn how to scream. Scream with technique. If yeah. You use a scream without technique, you're going to damage your vocal cords. Right? Yeah. So they, they kind of teach you how to scream without damaging your Exactly, and for example, um, children's teachers, it's important how to say, hey, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> no. Like, you need to, to know how to scream, because if not, yeah, I think, yeah, the most of the teachers of uh, children are like, in general, it's very dangerous because you have like 30 machines of twang. <laughs> yeah, no. you, you need to know. <laughs> well, the, the theory is not to scream.
at all. No, it's it's better to to be in silence and not scream. But sometimes you have to do that. And also, if you are in a very noisy situation, your vocal cords can be damaged. Even if you are you aren't even uh, talking or something, you can be in silence in in a disco with the, the music so strong yeah. and and you arrive at home and you say well i didn't even speak <laughs> i was only and with the the sound we can sometimes damage our voice for a singer it's better not to go to a noisy place yeah there are some things there is the car situation talking in uh, the hands-free in the car, uh, yeah. telephone, it's a typical one, <laughs> yeah. damage the voice, and so I was not screaming, but it's, it's a uh, psychoacoustic thing, you don't know where is the microphone, so you're doing an effort, you don't know, because you're not addressing someone, so you're just speaking, well, yes, I went, you're forcing, but you, but you don't have the consciousness you're mm -hmm. doing that, because we need to focus. To, to coordinate all the, the pressure we put in the muscles and in the volume. So I, I'm a victim of that. I have <laughs> many air in my voice, so I, I'm doing therapy. And the main thing she said is, don't speak in the car. Because it, there's a lot of sounds in the car. You no, know, the car going, the motor, the, the, yeah. everything. The background is noisy. Yeah, it's very noisy. And you don't, I have the, you know, the, the I'm, Talking to a microphone, I don't know where it is. Mm. So it's it's an effort. Yeah, it's so important to to listen to yourself when you are talking. So, for example, uh, I don't know if you know this trick. Like, you take your ear, like a telephone, and make like this. It's it's very good for the those situations. But well, I think. It's too much sometimes for the year, so be careful. But if we say, uh, we can listen to our voice so loudly with this kind of... Uh, something very important for the voice is the, the way we listen to everything, and especially to ourselves. Mm, do you know Alfred Tomatis? Do you know? Um, Alfred Tomatis. He he um, he was uh, a specialist about the voice and the the ear, and he uses to to cure. Uh, her, his patients uh, about the uh, he, uh, listening to different sounds, different frequencies. Because in general, when when we are talking or we are singing, we are listening in in a manner. So what we are listening to, we are reproducing, and it's. It's very, very interesting. He has a, a book called uh, The Voice and the Ear. And it's really, really good to know some things about the, the ear and how it's connect, connected to the voice. So, well, we are listening to different frequencies. And I think it's... It's interesting. And, well, more suggestions. Like, if you want to... I wanted you to, to know about some, some different books and audio books that, that I was working with. And, and I think they are very interesting for... Uh, for a, a technique, for example, other names are 
Seth Briggs. He has an audiobook called Singing for the Stars. Uh, and it's, it's good because it has a lot of scales and exercises. And Peckham. is good too. She has a, a, an audiobook of technique also. Ah, Judy Nimak. I think it, I, I write, yeah. She has a book, it's about jazz and technique, both things, and to develop the, um, the year about uh, scales. It's called hear it and sing it Jay Clayton has a, an interesting audiobook audiobook too <laughs> well uh, ah this is you know, Alfred Tomatis is interesting for uh, um, knowing more about the, the listening. But uh, you know Murray Schaefer? Murray Schaefer? I think, yeah, it's uh, Murray Schaefer <laughs> is from Canada. And he has uh, some books about the listening. How do we listen to the music of the world? He, he, um, he is always struggling against the, the noise in the cities. And he's very interesting about listening. And well, these are some suggestions that just, I wanted just to... Just one, one thing. The, um, the listening to sing is very important because you have you have to, to keep in mind the, the tone, the pitch to sing, otherwise you are out of pitch. So the listening is very important for the voice, but also to sing. It's, you have to learn how to listen to the music because we are doing a scale, we were doing a scale, which is simple. But sometimes there are things that are more complicated that we don't get it so easily. So it's, it's a question of training the ear to listen better. And if you listen better, you sing better. That's, that's pretty obvious. So of course, listening is the first step. Well, we learn to speak listening. So everything is about listening. We learn everything almost listening and reading. But by listening, since man is a man, we learn everything. It passes the, the habits, history, the the knowledge. So, of course, listening is very important to train everything, everything, every way of being, every habit we have. And singing is the most, I, I would say, hearing is the most important thing to sing, right? Yes, yes. By hearing, you can know if you are on the key or out of tune. Yes, of course. And we have the yeah. And, uh, it's important to listen. First of all, to listen. Mm -hmm. That means that we are on the mm -hmm. And second, by listening what we are, I am singing, I can correct harmonic, out of tune or not. Correct. Very important. To mm -hmm. Another another thing I think you are uh, in my mind. Most of the people we like to. to Follow our music, the, the music, singers, right? And sometimes we uh, listen, for example, Freddie Mercury, and we try, uh, uh, try, always try to listen what he is singing, and we try to sing on the same way. His tune is different; his key is different. There, he can sing, for example, on a level that we cannot. So the recommendation. What I learned from my, my, my teacher is you must follow him by your key. <coughs> Not try, otherwise you are forcing yourself. And you are uh, uh, 
are damaging tenor. If you want to sing, you don't want to damage the best instrument you have in yourself. I think it's a good way to, because I, I think many, especially young people, uh, uh, they have the, they have the, the, the musician, they like to sing like uh, them, mentioned Mercury, but others. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I, uh, I listen to them and they are damaging, they are not singing, they are damaging their, uh, their vocal cords. And that is not, um, and, uh, because they are only listening, not what they are singing, but what the other one is singing. Mm -hmm. And that is very, very dangerous. Uh, my voice is not good because I'm coughing too much uh, lately, and <clears throat> the result is, I'm forcing, and the result is this. So, because of uh, your situation, my voice is not good, but can be as well, if I sing the way she sings. Mm -hmm. Our children are I cannot sing the same way. I can sing the same song, but on my uh, my key, mm -hmm. on my phone. Yeah, but and it's more interesting mm -hmm. singing as you as you sing. Yes. No, imitating is like the the first phase of art. No, and a painter is imitating some painters he likes, and <laughs> after that. He started to to speak in first person, like you know, it it makes sense to to be ourselves. <laughs> There's a psychological um, thing in that you are explaining because many people listen what they want to listen. So learning how to listen is another thing because if someone is doing karaoke or imitating an artist, he's hearing the reference. Is not hearing his um, potential or um, his identity. He's listening to what he wants to, to, to do. So that is a, an aspect. It's like looking yourself in the mirror. Many times people want to see what they think they are. It's like uh, the voice is the same as seeing, it's the same. You have a mirror, you see, many people listen to this, themselves singing, I don't like my voice. You know, it's the same people. I don't like myself in the photo. It's the same. So they try to change the best way or put things, you know. The vocal is the same. So people want to seem like that beautiful lady she saw on the video clip. And every girl wants to be like that and look nice and sing like that and <laughs> do the way she sees. The vocal is the same. You try to do the same, you know, the same athletic thing. To, to be impressive. So I would say that's a, a psychological thing. And many times we don't listen to what it really is. Of course, this is not scientific mm. because our ear adapts. But there's this question of doing, and of course you are damaging because Freddie Mercury was not imitating, I don't know, others, he was being himself. If we try to, to, to imitate Louis Armstrong, we are definitely of course, definitely, like there is definitely destroying our yeah, yeah, yeah. and the musical. Of course, of course. Yeah, <laughs> because of the, the different nature of each voice. Exactly. For example, I, I can sing for a short time with belting, but I can't sing like in a lot in a concert with belting because my, my instrument <laughs> wouldn't and afford you, this. And you are a trained, uh, trained uh, person. You have your voice trained. You have uh, mm. all the techniques to, to control <coughs> the, the, the breathing and everything. So, uh, and you have some difficulties. So uh, a normal person, well, we don't we don't control all those techniques. Uh, we must think that we must think, imitate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's difficult to find your own personality singing, and we are always searching for this. And well, I'm in in a moment in my career where, well, I was uh, integrating a lot of groups of like bands of uh, jazz, bossa nova. Uh, Latin American music, like uh, from Venezuela, Argentina, 
Indian music also. I was doing a lot of styles and it was good for me. But suddenly I was playing with him and he was like, what? But something more personal. You, you haven't done something with your own voice, really. I tried once with a band, but it wasn't that deep. You know? We are investigating about ourselves uh, in our project, but, well, it took me a, a long time to understand that I had to look for my own voice, you know? Because when it's dangerous, when you know a lot of things about technique and music theory and all this stuff, it's dangerous because you are so concentrate, concentrated on those things and not uh, and what your career can be. And you can't uh, make a career without your own personality. No? What, what do you have to say to the world? No? It could be something small or big. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, it's what you have to say or what you feel to say. And I think it's very important, more than these things. <laughs> but it's interesting to, to, to see these kind of things because uh, sometimes we need some tools to develop more things. And we, uh, we, are, we are having some different expectations about what we want to do technically. And it's always good to expand what we, we are doing. But the more essential thing is like uh, doing things um, with some meaning, with the sense of ourselves. I think so, because, well, I'm learning too, and <laughs> it's, well, he's a producer of, he produced a lot of singers, uh, some of them known, and uh, I would like you to, to say something about this kind of thing, you no? Know? How do you, mm. how do you see the work with a singer in general? Mm. Well, I, I think it's always about the message and the messenger. I mean, not all messages are for me. Not all messages are for me to play. I could not play a concert of Rachmaninoff. I'm not trained to that. I'm not in that mood, emotional mood, even on that kind of ambition. So what I say is, if I do that, it can go wrong in the way of communicating, because the process is there's one who is communicated and there has to be another one who's receiving the message. The greatest achievement in an artist, either it is in music or other field, is when the message is well uh, served by the messenger and it gets to people. They understand. It can be a very simple message of love or it can be a very flourished and deep um, philosophical thinking doesn't matter the thing is that you have to be the right messengers for the message which means you have a frequency of emotional frequency of giving a message there are some people who are very emotional there are people who are very rhythmically you see and there are people who don't have any rhythm in the body so they sing ballads it's okay because they cannot do, the, you know, the groovy stuff. And there are guys who can do the groovy stuff, but when they sing melodies, like, oh man, what are you doing? You know, you're not uh, enough um, romantic or whatever. So I think the most important thing is to know what kind of message suits the singer. And for me, as a producer, for instance, if I go to meet some new singer to work with him, I prefer to have a coffee than to go to a studio. It's like, I watch him, I see how he communicates with the guy, if he's a man, how he communicates with the women around him, what he thinks of himself, but then what really is functional on his way of speaking. And I say, okay, this kind of thing doesn't work. And he thinks it works, it works. Like, I like to, 
to wear a blue shirt and nothing happens. Then he hates a green shirt and everybody says, oh, you look younger. And he says, oh, yeah. But he has never thought that the green is the frequency that is better for him. And it happens a lot with, with us. We have our tastes, but sometimes our taste is against the, the right vibration for us. We have to discover that. It's a simple example that has to do many times with artistic language. You know, we think about, well, my, the green is my color, but it doesn't change anything. And then you, you, you wear, I don't know, a, vel uh, a, not a white thing. And everybody says, wow, you have a good energy. <laughs> you have to think about those things, you know, that is the message. Because you are, everything is symbols and messages. Everything, when I'm communicating, you know, mm. everything. And you have to believe in the message. No? We are working yeah. with a musical producer who is, uh, by the way, a great lyricist. And uh, we were working on the lyrics of our project. And, well, hmm, uh, I think this phrase is good for you. For you. And I was singing that, and I was saying, oh my God, I don't like this phrase, but I won't say anything for the moment. And I was singing, and he, you don't believe in the phrase. Yeah. <laughs> and me, well, yeah, perhaps I don't, you, I didn't know what to say, but he was like, uh, uh, scan, yeah. You don't believe that because you aren't singing with, you know, like. And it's very important to, to see what we believe in. And sometimes we have a, a lot of um, ideas uh, of what we have to do uh, in music. For example, I was singing uh, a lot in Portuguese, English, uh, And the, the lately years, uh, I'm singing more and more in Spanish because I'm returning to my roots and accepting to sing in Spanish. I think it's a kind of... Uh, I'm, I'm shy because, well, <laughs> it's so clear, Spanish, my language. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> It took me a, a long time to express myself in Spanish. It's strange, but it happens. In, in general, I have uh, some students who are singing always in, in English, and I tell them, oh, let's sing something in Spanish. No, 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 no. It's like, yeah, it's something, a kind of scary thing. <laughs> I think that... Um... In Portuguese, there, there has been a lot of Port Portuguese singers and bands uh, singing in English. And there was uh, this uh, interview with a guy, a uh, very smart guy, who just said this. They sing in English because they're afraid to understand what they are singing. Because they're afraid of singing words of love. Accepting words of love. Because if it is in English, it's a language that you don't dream, you're not sleeping in dreaming, you don't actually in your daily life, you don't love in that language. So you're speaking of love in a distant mode. It's easy, you don't get involved. So it is very scary to speak in something that you have, you know, to support. <laughs> you have to dress yourself with. And words are a dress. We have to, you know, dress those words and be honest with those words so that is a difficult part for artists many times so it's it's a it's a fight it's a fight it's a wall that you have to understand to to because you're selling ideas when you're singing in a way you are selling ideas and you can you have to be convincing you have to be convincing in a painting in a book you know you have to to dress those words and words are We are speaking of music, but words in music are, I would say, the power of music. Because the spoken word is the most, I believe this, is the most powerful tool human being has. You can think of these big concerts with 
40,000 people singing the same lyric at the same time, the same word for a, an hour. It's, it's, like a, it's like a religion thing, you know? <laughs> You're do, you are performing, he's, he's the priest, you know? He's, he's performing such a, a, a powerful thing. Everybody sing at the same time, the same words. It's very powerful. So the voice is a, an infinite instrument. You put words, you put emotions, you put a message. And if that message is understood, it really is inf infinitive. I mean, it's like the great operas with uh, words sung and performed. It's like Shakespeare with personal music. It's like the fairy queen, the great fairy queen. It's like Romeo and Juliet. And you, you get astonished, you get... It drives you, you know, you, everything, your guts moves, your heart moves, you, you cry, it touches you. you. You cannot resist. So I think the voice is infinitive, is an infinite tool that will help you, but you have to look for the message and the emotions to, to give, to deliver the message. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we have 10 minutes, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to, to say only some things about the health of the voice. So, for example, some tips like so quickly, they, they can say more, much more than me. If you want to, to share some things, it would be so nice. But, um, for example, not to, to go to a noisy places as we, we were talking about before, uh, like mm -hmm. hydrating the voice a lot. It's not about like, Drinking a lot, like one liter, <laughs> no. but often, no. Uh, also, a lot of people have, um, you know, like uh, how can I say, Elstein uh, reflux, 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 yeah. and they don't know it, no. So sometimes we we. We, we have our voice a little damaged and I, we don't know why. And sometimes it's because we, we go to bed after dinner or we eat like some acid things like tomatoes or uh, orange or lemon at night. No, it's not about stopping eating some things, but finding the, the, the hour for that. For example, in, in the, um, oh my God, pequeño almuerzo, breakfast, yeah, in the breakfast, <laughs> <laughs> or something like this. Um, also, when, when we have damaged our voice, we think, hmm, I mean, cam caramel will help me. No, <laughs> it's not good at all. Um, we should avoid... No. Because, because mean what it does, it kind of numbs your vocal cords. It, it numbs, like Carlos said, it like anesthetizes your vocal cords. So for a moment, you, you, you think you are, you are talking better and freely without damaging it, just because they are like numb. After that uh, mean effect is gone, they will be even worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> yeah. And the, so and the solution? So the solution should be water. If you, More water. If you are suffering from the voice, like something acute, something that just happened, silence is the best treatment. Okay. And water, a lot of water, normal temperature, room temperature. It's not not too hot, not too, not too cold. Okay. That is like the main. It can mm -hmm. be difficult because if you are a teacher or if you depend uh, your voice to work, it's going to be really tough for you. But like, that's the two main, most important things, resting and hydrating. Because mm -hmm. also important to say that when you drink water, you are not hydrating your vocal cords because you would suffocate. Okay? Yeah. So, because the vocal cords are in the larynx, so 
only the air goes through it, but it goes to your stomach, and then our body kind of distributes all over. But it gives you a sense of refreshment in the pharynx, which is the, the other tube that's above <coughs> the, the larynx, and that is really important. But other than that, here in Macau, we should be careful with the uh, temperature changing. Because yeah. in AC, the AC it's like a, a poison. But we need it here because for voice is horrible. So it's kind of just adequate your the clothes you wear. Like if you go to inside the bus, it's too cold. Just yeah. Too cold. Ladies know know that, right? <laughs> and yeah, mm -hmm. just just and always hydrate yourself. It's really really important. Mm -hmm. It's really important, and also the liquids, not so hot or so cold. Middle term. Yeah. yeah in general, you say, oh, my voice is. Oh, I'll take a hot, very hot tea. It'll be so fine. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's not good at all. And yeah, warm, warm uh, tea. The worst things that we can eat uh, and for the voice are coffee, sugar. Yeah, coffee, sugar, and alcohol are the, the worst. And milk, milk sometimes because it, it uh, creates yeah. mucus. Yeah, so in general it's better not to. Just one question for the professionals. What about the relation of the nuts, walnuts, and, and the, because the, the, the oil that brings, uh, of course we can eat, but before we see, is it. Uh, is it walnuts? Okay. To be honest with you, I cannot tell you yeah. nothing. About, I don't. I really don't know the connection. What of I do of the oil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I do know it's about milk. And for example, some people don't know chocolate. It's not chocolate. Uh, chocolate yeah. is yeah. horrible before yeah. singing. Yeah. It's not good. No, because milk and chocolate, what it does, it's like it. it, uh, it like you have some some fluid in your in your in your vocal cord. It's like like the mucus. Mm. So it that's like almost. Someone's expression, it, it gets like the quantity rises to a level, then you start pick up, you do like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, to, to, uh, and yeah, that thing, that thing is very bad for the vocal cords. Like, and yeah, when you have ginger, ginger, ginger is a good. It's okay. Honey is not good for the vocal cords, but it's very good for the lungs. It's, 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 it's so many bits. No, it's like, yeah. no, honey is like soft no, but your voice, gives you a sense of like it's soft, but it's not like, it doesn't cure you. For example. It has sugar. I, I grow up, yeah. I grow up like yeah. listening to sugar. I grow up listening to, if you are like with a cold, your voice is not okay. If, before you go to bed, you drink. Milk with a spoon of honey. Yeah. And yeah. people, and people <laughs> will, will go to our, to our and yeah. blah, blah, blah. people will go to my yeah. office mm. and tell hey, but I I drink uh, uh, milk with honey before going to sleep and in the morning so hot. I'm better. <laughs> and I, my, my question is, do you think you're better because of the milk with honey or because you rest eight hours? So yeah. Kind of, yeah. To rest uh, is fundamental. Because milk, it's yeah. like it's it, uh, sleeping. Sleeping eight hours is Cool, you know, <laughs> it's the right thing. If you are sleeping only a little, your vocal cords will be like, uh. for example, when, when you are a little, when your vocal cords are fatigue, you know, and you have to rest because if not, it's very difficult. For example, in the morning to wait at least two hours if you could avoid speaking or something but yeah but for example you know uh, a doctor a long time ago he told me when i was a child i, I always had problems with the vocal cords when i was a child and it, it was that's why i'm a singer <laughs> <laughs> to do the opposite thing and uh, he told me to to rest my voice like 21 days and it was like something uh, we they used to do in the past but today nowadays it's like he's saying like resting the voice 
no? when you need it, but not 20, 21 days. Because uh, the larynx, it's something wild. When, when you don't speak or sing, she, she will um, close a little. It's not like, you, you need to exercise the voice. So uh, to make some different exercises, uh, to, to train the muscles, like a football player, you need to train every day to achieve a good performance. Yeah. So if, if you're a singer, if you're not using your instrument for 20 days, of course you're going to sing. It's not yeah. good, no? Yeah. But it was in, in the old times, and nowadays it's... So you, you need to, to use your voice, but yeah, a little less. And, and if, also important, something I, I say to my patients is like, you have to be your own therapist. And what, what I mean with that, it's like, you need to listen, you know your body really well and your voice. So imagine it's midday and you start uh, noticing that you are speaking with an effort. Kind of, you are, <coughs> and you, you feel that you need to drink water more often. So you need to raise the voice. She's giving you some signals that she's not okay. So it's really important you listen to the quality of her voice. What are you feeling? So for example, if you start getting a roughness, okay, down, you cannot continue to talk endlessly, you need to stop and rest. Mm -hmm. So that is really important because sometimes people, voice starts to get different and they keep pushing and pushing and pushing until the point yeah, that it's... Cool. Yeah, so it's like and it's really important to listening because you know your body and your voice. If it's like, if it's different and you feel some weird thing in your throat, maybe it's time to, to, to drink some water and give it a rest. It's really important. Mm -hmm. also, this is, uh, I also found very important today with all the dancing and body movement because uh, it's really you get to know better your body when you are going down how your voice is using if you are still relaxed or you have some <coughs> tensions because the more you know about your tensions you can learn <coughs> to relax and because as our vocal uh, voice teacher told us what I never forget uh, is that when you sing if you think about you are using this using that using that you are creating tension uh, exactly. Your body has millions of cells. The, all the cells, they vibrate. <laughs> so you have to use the vibration of all cells because the, all, each cell, they sing also. Even the toes. When you see me use the, ten, the right tension in your toes, you can create uh, a different sound sometimes. Yeah. That's true. That mm -hmm. kind of concentration, that to be, to be present mm -hmm. at the moment, yeah, I'm here singing, that's all, no? to live that, because if not, your cells are not working for that. What is worried about the, your job there? Another one thinking, oh, am I pretty in this moment? <laughs> well, we have to concentrate a lot what we are doing in that moment. I think it's very important to, to sing properly no? and to avoid the effort and all this stuff, it, it's important. All the emotions con concentrated in the present, what you are doing in this moment, is, is really, really good. And more things like when, when you are making like, <laughs> it's very bad, no? Because you are, <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, it's like a golpe de glotico. Uh, yeah, it's an attack, like... Water? With, yeah, or... Hey, go get some water. Yeah. Because you think you are clearing, but you are creating damage. Yeah, and it's very dangerous. It's a vicious cycle. Because you do it again. And a lot of people have, have this, like a tick, like... <laughs> when they are nervous... <laughs> And it's, it's a really a problem because you are damaging your voice all the time. So the, the best thing to do if you have something in your throat is like you take air and you open everything, no? And <coughs> no? Or even yawning, like... Or yawning, yeah. You can see my larynx is... May I? Because for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, because I'm a man, you can see the larynx pretty well. So when I do like this, the, the, the movement is going to make like... You see how down she, 
sequence. Mm. So this movement sometimes it's enough to kind of release the mucus. Okay? So you drink water or you swallow saliva and if it doesn't work you can do it like this. <sighs> Just to create this movement of the, vo the larynx and vocal cords and maybe the mucus will release by itself. Yeah. yeah. So good. So Actually, it's very good for vo vocal techniques to warming up, for example, with O, with A, with U. It's always good because you are moving your soft palate. You are going downwards with your larynx. It's a good position to open your throat and it's good so for example this is good no uh, <laughs> no because it's so close <coughs> and well we'll finish <laughs> thank you for coming to the infinite voice no infinite instrument, infinite instrument. <laughs> Rui Felipe at piano thank you.